Ohio. Not the state. It's Japanese for good morning. And I welcome you to the Bible study today. We're finishing off a scene, very critical scene, here in um, 1 Samuel chapter 2, where a prophet has come to Eli the high priest and said, you've blown the whole thing. You weren't as guilty as your sons were because they were, they were scoundrels, the Bible calls them that. They were stealing the offerings due to God and messing around with the women, taking advantage of them at the gate of the tabernacle. So, they were going to get judgment from God, and God tells Eli, you let them, you look the other way. You omitted to correct them and get them out. So you're going to lose now your place of privilege as your family, as the high priest. And now, still going on, verse 34, chapter 2. And now what happens to your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, will be assigned to you. They will both die on the same day. God says, you're going to know this was no accident. Because you looked the other way and you let them carry on like that, that's why we have to correct our children, even though they're our children. When children are wrong, they're wrong. You ever be around parents who, they let their kids do anything, and if you bring it to their attention, no, Johnny never did that. It's nauseating, right? And you're not doing your child a favor. They're going to grow up, not be able to adjust to real life, where people won't put up with their nonsense. They end up friendless. So now God has said, it's going to happen on the same day. Both of them will die. But I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, probably referring here to Samuel, who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his priestly house, and they will minister before my anointed one always. Then everyone left in your family line will come and bow down before him for a piece of silver and a loaf of bread, and plead, appoint me to some priestly office so I can have food to eat. In other words, all the, your privileges, which you abused, now you're going to lose them, and your posterity is going to pay for your bad judgment. Notice what God was looking for. This is going to happen twice in this book of 1 Samuel. It's going to happen here of Samuel. It's going to happen later when Samuel anoints David to be the first king. Notice what God says. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest. You've been unfaithful. I'm going to get someone who's going to follow me. They won't be perfect, but they're going to be faithful. I'm going to work in them. Who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. There we go. There's the problem. Hophni and Phinehas were dedicated to Hophni and Phinehas. Eli was a, seems um, dedicated to himself and his family name. But not what God had on his mind and heart. So God says, I'm going to find someone who will be searching for my ways and want to say what I want said, do what I want done who will understand my heart. Isn't that happening right now today? He doesn't want churchgoers only. He, Christ is building a church where people will know the ways of God, the heart of God, the love of God, and express it. You can go to church on Sunday and express during the week nothing of the heart of God. Be mean, selfish, proud, racist, cheap, not generous, not forgiving, and that's always been the battle, to find pastors who have a heart after God's own heart. Did you know that Paul in Philippians says, I'm going to send Timothy to you, to the church at Philippi. I have no one else like him. You know, Timothy was his spiritual son. I have no one else like him. Speaking of his own ministry team, Everyone else speaks, I'm sorry, 
Everyone else seeks their own interests and not those of Jesus Christ. No, no, let me try that on. He's writing to the church and said, I'm sending Timothy. He'll care for you like I do. All the other ministers with me, they seek their own interests. You mean you could be in, in the ministry and have a gift of preaching, but end up selfish seeking your own interests? Yeah. Yep. When I started in the ministry, I was so insecure and, and proud to, too proud to admit that I was insecure and fumbling. You think I cared about the congregation, 12 people, 15 people? You think I cared about them, what they were going through? I just wanted to get through one sermon without collapsing. Why? Because I'm thinking of me. I'm thinking of God and his feeling toward the people. So a lot of insecurity and nervousness is just we're preoccupied with self. But Paul says when Timothy comes, he's going to be like me. I'm like a mother nursing a, a baby at her breast. I saw in my office a mother recently with her husband. They were talking to me and she had a newborn and our families know each other well. She took the baby, you know, covered herself up with a thing and over her dress and, and was suckling the baby, nurse feeding, breastfeeding the baby there. And, you know, the baby there covered. I couldn't see the baby, but, you know, that picture, Paul says, that's how I was with you. And I'm sending Timothy. He'll be like that with you. The others, they, they just, they just want to, like, do their thing. They don't have the heart of God, the mind of God. I want the mind of God, the heart of God. Pray for me when I preach this Sunday that I'll see the people the way God sees them. That at our conference, Span the Flame, on April 21 through 23, that God will Im imprint on us his thoughts, his feelings about people. I can't have it on my own. I'm just a selfish guy. But I'm a Christian, which means I have Christ in me. And that means the Holy Spirit can work in all of us and make us different. Not like Hophni and Phinehas. Not like self-indulgent Eli. But like Samuel, who walked before God and served the people. Come on, let's ask God to do that for us. Blessings on you. See you tomorrow.